Hello! Going for a slightly different angle today and a slightly different camera. I just got a GoPro 10 from my family for Christmas and it's in its media mode and I wanted to see how it worked. Uh, it doesn't have quite the same quality depth of field as my main camera but um, I thought it's really nice to just do things quickly without all the normal setup. Anyway, reason I'm here today is to review this. This is the Beta FPV Express LRS micro module. I've actually started filming this before. I've had it a couple of months and other things got in the way and there was kind of a little bit of controversy about it. I'll, I'll show you what it is and what you get in the box. The module looks like this. It's a standard JR module. It's got this little LCD screen there. It comes with this rubber duck antenna which nobody wants and this mini moccasin style antenna and this little cable which seems to connect to that. And the reason this was a little bit controversial at the start is when Beta FPV uh, sent it to me, they also said they were having trouble because someone had posted bad things about it and uh, they wanted me to redress the balance as such. And it, it kind of wasn't a bad thing. It was from Jay Smith, who's one of the Express LRS developers. He was sent a, a sort of pre-production kit and he gave his honest opinion about uh, the way the electronics were handled and the, the way his um, module worked. Uh, he wasn't particularly keen on it. His main um, issue with it is that the PCB appeared to be the wrong way around, so the cooling wasn't very efficient. And what happened is one of the Beta FPV developers replied to that comment because it got posted on Facebook. And but instead of giving kind of a, a sort of calm like overview about you know you've got a pre-production model. Uh, these are the things we're going to change. This is the reason the PCB is the way around it is. It kind of, it, it's overly defensive. So it turned into a bit of an attack on the person making the review, who is, don't forget, a developer who's doing all this for nothing and developing uh, Express LRS. So, you know, it, there's, there's a way of handling criticism and it's not like that. And, you know, criticism where it's due. I got this previous uh, nano module from Beta FPV, it was missing components. So it would not flash over Wi-Fi. I had to disassemble it to get to an internal button to press to flash it. So, you know, their hardware isn't exactly known for being the very greatest. And at the time of release, this thing was running its own firmware version. It wasn't on the regular um, Express LRS firmware. Since that time, it's been updated. I'm just showing you the little L uh, LCD screen. And what I'm hoping is I'm gonna be able to take this and flash this as normal and it will just work. Version two, in fact, version 201 is out. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if this will just flash and this will work for me. So yeah, let's go ahead and see if we can get this running. This will run up to 500 milliwatts. They're just about to bring out a one watt version, which is why I thought I'd better catch on and do this. I did mention to them, it's like, I don't think many people actually need to go up to one watt. If you fly at 100 milliwatts, your chance of outflying the signal, unless you're doing really long range, like fixed wing stuff, is pretty limited. 100 milliwatts will get you an awful long way, probably way beyond where your battery would last if you want to come back again. But that's by the by, this is 500. The new one will do one watt and that's gonna have a heat sink. And I don't know if they're doing anything with the fan position, but there you go. Anyway, let's see if we can flash this. Haven't had much success flashing any of my Express LRS modules first time around, so fingers crossed this one works a bit better. So before even going anywhere, I decided to see if Wi-Fi would work. So I went into the Lua script, selected Wi-Fi update. You'll see I've got the module in there. Then I connected to the Wi-Fi network the uh, password Express LRS if you didn't know and immediately I got this window up there saying welcome to the update page saying it's running 1.0 so I should now be able to use this to do the update so let's get on with that okay so here I am I've just updated my Express LRS configurator since it was a new version and we've got the latest stable release there which is 201 I've put in the target as beta FPV 2.4 gigahertz out of all these lot it's really is growing uh, there's a lot going on and device type a little bit am I a, a 24TX or 24TX micro I guess this is the nano because this is actually labeled as the micro so we're gonna do a Wi-Fi um, standard mode my binding phrase uh, I think the rest is pretty okay some some extra things here that I don't 
I've never seen these before. I should have read the notes really before I started. Anyway, that is the correct Wi-Fi. So let's try a build and flash and see what happens. Success! This is the first time I've been able to flash a module the first time without going through and doing, you know, lots of problem determination and fixing. So that's good. Make sure to update the Lua script on your radio. Well, that's true. I don't know if I've got the updated one. So let's download that and we'll put it in place. Now, just before we move on, I said I should have read the notes before I started on here. And when I looked down, there were a couple of things I hadn't seen before. Uh, and a few things that look pretty obvious. But the home Wi-Fi SSID and the home Wi-Fi password, I kind of thought, is this like a backpack thing? And it's not. Um, if you read the notes, which are actually really good now, the um, they've really kept things updated nicely. So there's a whole section about what the uh, firmware options are. And what the network options are now is that your module can connect to your home network if you put in its network SSID and the password. So previously it would bring up a hotspot uh, called ExpressRS um, and it would have the address of 10.0.0.1 I think. Anyway, if you join to that network then you could do the flashing as I've just shown you. Uh, this can be like hassle for some people because they're on their Wi-Fi network and if they then connect over to the um, the ExpressRS Wi-Fi network then you know they have to faff about changing networks. For for me, I've got a wired connection and a, a wireless card, so I can connect to both at once. But for everybody else, um, or people on a like a single network adapter, this is really handy because previously, if you if you're on Wi-Fi only and you wanted to do Wi-Fi flashing, what you'd have to do is build your firmware first, connect to the ExpressLRS network, and then do the flashing. If you get the module to connect to your home network, then you can do it all in one uh, operation and it, it will um, just find that on your existing network and, and do it. So that's quite a handy feature. There are some other things in version two I'm gonna to come to as well, because there's lots of interesting stuff there. Okay, well, I've gone ahead and I've updated that firmware. And it really is just as well that I updated the Lua script as well, because if we actually look there, the old version was called ELRS, or at least it does in the lower script. And if we try and run this, nothing happens. You see my my modules there, it's fine, but yeah, that old lower script don't work. So we have to use the new one, which has got lots of new stuff in it. Looks much more um, improved, actually. Tells you exactly what you've got there. Uh, packet rate normal, telemetry rate's pretty normal. Uh, you've got the TX power sort of hidden down there, which you can change. There's this new thing called Dynamic, which I think is experimental, but uh, interesting all the same. Uh, we've even got a fan threshold, so it knows when to start the fan on this one. And um, it's got some other interesting stuff as well, like uh, BLE joysticks. I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, and Wi-Fi connectivity, as I've mentioned in the previous thing. And it's even got your version you're running... Uh, and of course the, the string that, that that has. Now as far as the module goes, and it's one of the reasons I did want to wait before I actually updated this one. Originally this module uh, was running its own custom firmware because support for the LCD in the back wasn't there. Now full support for the LCD comes in 2.1 so currently if you try and do anything to it, if you like long press or do anything at all, nothing happens. Which is just as well, because when this was first released, if you had a model bound and you then touched the button, um, it would uh, fail safe, which is not good. So I'm hoping when, when we get to 2.1, there'll be something built in that you can touch the button, you can do stuff with this, um, and it won't fail safe. But basically the idea of this if you stay on the original firmware it gave you, it, it would work and you could change things via this button. Uh, I prefer the Lua script anyway, but um, the good thing is now in version 2.01, it gives you the status of what's happening, uh, but you can't change on this. But if I go and change something on the Lua script, like this is say uh, 250 hertz, so if we change that, let's change our packet rate to 500. And 
we should now see that our packet rate says 500. So this is now a status thing for now until 2.1 comes out. The other important thing to note is that if you do go to version two, then any of your receivers on version one aren't gonna work. You need to also upgrade those to version two. I went ahead and upgraded the one on this one. It's actually got a, a Namimno receiver in this one. And it, it did strike me that how do I know what receiver's in what? Because that's buried under there. And I don't want to unscrew that and have to get out to check what it is. And currently there's nothing that says, ah, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. But since version two, if you've got Wi-Fi updatable receivers, if you connect to the Wi-Fi page, um, on the normal 10.0.0.1, then it actually shows you what current firmware is running so you know exactly what to flash it with. Now, we of course have beta FPV receivers and they look pretty much the same. They're little Wi Fi enabled things, and you've got the normal dipole and you've got some cable, and that's all good. I'm not actually going to do a flight test this time, but when I do, and I'm not nicely because it's raining, I'll be taking out this one. This has got the Nanimo receiver in it, but that's kind of the point with Open LRS. It doesn't matter what module you have or what receiver you have, as long as you've got the same old bind phrase, you can talk any to any in and fly it. But one thing I wanted to come back to is one of the extra options. Um, there's lots there and you can read all about it, but I like this thing here, BLE joystick. Uh, and if we enter that, it does this. What does it do? Basically, it connects via Bluetooth to something and acts as a joystick. Now, many radios now have no USB plugs and stuff and you just plug in and go. But being able to use Bluetooth is very convenient. Let's see how that works. Okay, now I'm on my Mac here and, you know, it's similar if you were going to rough it and use Windows, I guess. But basically, as long as you've got that Express LRS Bluetooth joystick running, you should come up with... Uh, something like the Express LRS joystick available in your Bluetooth and if you then pair those um, It should come up now. This comes up on my sim as unknown I haven't checked the code here to find out if it should come up as something But if I now move my sticks around I've got stuff happening Okay, so the modules in the back. We've got no wires got the sim on the screen And we're up and flying which is pretty cool. I think I guess um, you'd pretty much expect, let me turn the volume down, um, Bluetooth to have some more lag than going wide, but from what I can tell, I can't really feel it. I'm sure if you're some sort of super hardcore racer type, you can tell the difference. I cannot, um, and it flies perfectly well. You know, I don't know if it, it'll stop me plugging in but if you haven't got the sort of radio where it's easy to plug in or I know some radios have really uh, annoying places to plug the USB then that is a pretty handy feature but yeah just a little couple of touches on the Express LRS version 2 software which I think are pretty cool one quick thing to touch on which a, a lot of people mentioned is they had a problem with the recess USB cable now I bought a bunch of pretty basic uh, USB-C to, to USBs that I've been using on a regular basis. And that was able to slot in without a problem. Uh, and so I was looking for some sort of fatter ones and I found this OTG cable, which I think they have uh, like an extra resistor in to make it OTG. And that is a bit fatter and that doesn't go in. It just sort of hangs about there. So fat cables, although it's not particularly fat, there's, there's not a great deal of difference between the two. You can hopefully see it. Uh, as long as you've got a thin cable that go in, um, but normally you'd be using the USB to update it. Generally, I prefer to use the Wi-Fi because it's more convenient, but if you did want to update via USB, just be aware of that. When this first came out, I think this was a bit weaker. It had its very own firmware because uh, ELRS didn't support this properly, and if you then touched the button, your model would die, so that's not good. Um, it properly supports version two, of the firmware and version 2.1 is going to use this uh, LED properly. As I said, I haven't flown it yet. Um, I'll be doing that next when it stops raining and blowing a gown outside. And I, I expect this will be just absolutely fine. And I don't think I'll be going anywhere near the 500 milliwatt output. 100 milliwatts generally fine for uh, flying quads and stuff. But yeah, we'll check that out next time. In the meantime, this little guy had been the Beta FPV Micro ELRS module. I think that's right not the Nano, the Micro, JR. Um, 
kindly supplied by Vida FPV and of course that'll be linked down below for where you can check out more detail. As I said, come back next time, hopefully, and we'll be out flying this and we'll see how well it works and uh, if there's anything to be aware of. Hope this uh, little review has been useful and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.